awesome guys uh, won't you lend me the next few moments and I think we'll talk about something that is important for us to consider during this reality that we find ourselves in all over the world uh, my name is Henku I live in a small surf town in South Africa with my beautiful wife of it feels like 17 years right now but it's it's we're only going on two years and um, the story I want to share is, is a story of Jesus and the story goes like this is that he starts his ministry off um, in the early days, there's there's a lot of a lot of people that start following him, a, a unusual crowd that that forms around him, and um, he chooses to go sit on a mountain, um, a hilltop, and he and he starts one of his you the, the biggest sermons that he's ever done. It's called the Sermon on the Mount, and in the climax of the sermon, he chooses to use these words. He says this in Matthew seven: "Come to God through the narrow gate." Because the wide gate and the broad path is the way that leads to destruction. Nearly everyone chooses that crowded road. The narrow gate and the difficult way leads to eternal life. So few even find it. And in our small surf town, Jeffreys Bay, I walk outside. We're privileged to live close to the beach. I walk outside and I, I hear the ocean. I, I smell the ocean. But... I feel this I feel this feeling of I'm so close but yet I'm so far. I'm so close but I'm yet so far. I'm restricted from surfing, I'm not allowed to go surfing. And the the thing I think Jesus wants to portray in this story is that we are so close but yet we're so far. He's he I later identifies himself as the gate. He identifies himself as that narrow gate. He says that I am the gateway to enter through me is to experience life, freedom, and satisfaction. Which means that it's in this time, you might feel restricted um, to be able to be salt and light outside. I mean, it's easy. It's easy to, to be consumed in your own bubble of just being concerned about yourself and, and just making it out of here. Uh, but Jesus says, that's, a, that's the crowd of road. The culture right now is, is just look after yourself. Uh, but Jesus says that that is actually what leads to destruction. Just thinking about yourself. He says that the hard way, the difficult way that leads to life is to be invested in him, to follow his way because he is the one that gives satisfaction. His way is the, is the one that leads to eternal life. And that way is to be countercultural, to to think about creative ways of how to be the gospel, to be the church right now, and to be able to think of creative ways on how on how to do that. So to to be able to now the opportunity to be to be able to give without people seeing, you know, to be able to forgive when when it's hard to do so in the household. It's 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 hard to forgive, and and you would be quick to forgive. It's, it's the same thing as your neighbor that's irritating, the neighbor that you maybe hate, is to find a creative way on how to love to love them. Because the, I'll leave us with this scripture, because Jesus is saying that um, you're so close of finding life, but you, you get so far. You, you, you're focusing on yourself, but actually I'm asking you to, to focus on me, to focus on my way, because my way is going to lead you and everyone else to satisfaction and eternal life. And he eventually says, um, in the same sermon, he says that your lives are like salt among the people. But if you, like salt, become bland, how can your saltiness be restored? Flavorless salt is good for nothing and will be thrown out and trampled on by others. Which means us that have Jesus... It's, it's a desperate time where people need this message. And just like Jesus, think of creative ways, sitting on a mountain hill, not going to a synagogue, not necessarily going to a synagogue, where, where it's a creative way of sharing a message. And, he, and I really think he's encouraging us to rather be salty in a time that we need it, because if salt loses its flavor, it's useless.